In this episode of Bozak TV, we're going to look at static grass. We're going to turn one of these three pound bug zappers into a static grass applicator, see how the electronics work, and then have a look at using it onto a small diorama that I've made for you. So come along now and come and join the fun. Ugh, come on! Static grass probably owes its roots, pardon the pun, to classic car enthusiasts flocking, yes that's with an L, their interiors and sometimes their exteriors too. The wargaming, diorama and model rail hobby soon took on these techniques in favour of the unappealing coloured sawdusts of the past, though much improved versions of these are still available today. Commercially, there are a wide variety of static grass applicators designed to induce a static charge to the small plastic fibres so that they can stand vertically in the glue. They range from the cheapest uh, puffer bottle to a wide variety of shapes and costs. I'm going to attempt to produce an effective grass applicator from this bug zapper. Okay, so this is my relatively inexpensive, less than five pounds, in this case actually three pounds, electronic bug zapper. You'll find them in most of the uh, cheaper outlets. Uh, we're going to first open it up and see what's inside. Uh, press on the button. High pitched hum. Uh, green LED comes on. the sparks. From the frame itself for dispatching the flies. Right, let's take this thing apart. I'll take a close up on the iPad. Let's see if we can take apart the back. So we've got one of the plates connected to one of the yellow leads here. We've got the red lead connected to this finer section here. And we've got the second yellow lead. connected to this. So that will give us a negative trap between the positive on both sides. There we go. And these are just crimped on. The little crimps that hold on to the, the mesh. I'll just snip that out with a bit of spare mesh in case that might be an approach that we use. So 
So this is the guts of what we've got. And we'll need to work out a way of using the parts. So I've got some parts I want to try on this. Um, this I found in the garage. Fairly substantial um, chop block. And this from the drawer. But I think you can probably get them for a couple of quid. Just a tea strainer. Now, before I do this, I want to check that the static grass will fall through the uh, tea strainer. So I'll go and get some static grass. So just a piece of paper, and I've got these suspicious looking packs that came through the post from Woodland Scenics with a variety of different sizes of of uh, grass the, from the bigger 10 millimeter, one millimeter very fine stuff, more of the 10 millimeter, one millimeter scorched. And you can buy starter packs from Woodland Scenics. Six millimeter wild meadow, four millimeter autumn, four millimeter dead, four millimeter patchy again, and this bigger bag here is two millimeter spring. And go straight for some two millimeter. I think you can see physically. fall through the apertures in that particular tea strainer just fine. And let's try four millimeter. Four millimeter dead. Small pinch of that. And no problem, straight through, but notice, not very realistic, and all lying flat on their backs. Let's try one of these 10 gram packs of 10 millimeter bottom. And they're coming through fine as well. Okay, so this will do the full range that I would be looking for. Fantastic. Now, my thought was that I could make this interchangeable in that if I had this linked here, you using it to clamp and they'll go through this then I could change it for uh, something different I've just got the, the the mechanism there so the first thing I'm going to do is chop the ends off this I'll take a bit of wood to put it to lean on Yeah. <laughs> 
Us pretty well through. Um, I'll just good. No. Let's see if this chop block. Is big enough. To take these legs. Couldn't be better. Awful. Let's cut this off and see if we have enough space. Drilling hole. Let's mark the hole first where we want to go. I'm just using a nut, bolt and a washer to secure it through the middle of the chop block but found that it was sitting at an angle so I went back into the bin and lifted out the plastic spider surround material, cut myself a little arch from that and wedged it in at the back. So I left a little upward tab that was there. Okay so I'm going to test whether electronically I'm going to get this right now. So I'm going to take the two yellow wires and connect one into each side here, more for the sake of redundancy than um, we only really need the one. And I'll take the other one and it out and I think I'll trim that off and leave it so I can have other possibilities with that. That will grip on quite well with that so I think that's the way I'll go. Okay. Right, I'll just put this over here. Just to 
Okay, up. Push the shroud over. Nicely covering it. Replace the batteries. Replace the back. Yep. Oh, that seems to be working. Lovely. And now for a quick test with a little bit of cardboard. Okay. Let's take some of this glue. You just want your glue mixture to be uh, runny enough to paste around but also still slightly tacky. If it's a bit runny you can leave it uh, for a few minutes till it becomes to that tacky state. Remember to insert a screw or other metal object or pin in for the conduction. Give your grass a little bit of a scrumple and this is the finished result. I think shows quite happily that it's working. Okay as an alternative um, to the bigger hopper version, uh, I thought I would try one of these um, that the companies call a micro uh, static grasser. And rummaging around the drawer, I found this which I'd kept, which is a tube that used to contain a couple of sticks of uh, vanilla. And I drilled a hole in the lid that was there. And I thought I could cut one of the other uh, tea strainers up and wrap this around. So what I'm going to do first is with some uh, copper earth wire from uh, stripped out of a piece of cable. I'm just going to weave this in and out. Okay, trim off the excess. That looks like a piece of chain fencing or something that came off, bound to go back in the drawer. I just bent over the uh, jaggy bits and then secured some black electrical tape on the outside to uh, finish the job. idea is I can take power off there put it back there and then I've got a microstatic gas applicator. Other possibilities are um, uh, you could use a plastic pot like this, some people prefer that, and then just cut around the side there, have your uh, 
mesh cut out and glued in and you need some sort of electrical connection and then to secure it in you can go back to your bit that you've cut the mesh out glue that on there and then bolt it in just exactly the same as you've done in the, the block there and you've got one of these Okay, so this is a print of the circuit board that came out of the bug zapper and taking us from left to right we've got the battery connections here uh, looking at the components we've got a push button switch um, which we've got to hold down to keep the power going through we've got two resistors that are the same uh, which is green blue brown with a gold band so that's five for the green six for the blue ten for the brown so these are 560 ohm resistors both of those and um, we've got the green led here uh, to show that things are in operation we've got a transistor here and that's an npn transistor um, we have got um, uh, this big monster here which i'll explain in more details later on we've got this big green capacitor uh, which is a 3a103j capacitor which is rated at one kilovolts and i think if i couldn't get in to look more clearly we've got another capacitor joined in uh, parallel here and then finally this big resistor here which is red red blue with a gold band which is a gives us two two for the red blue is six again which gives us um 25 meg ohms or uh yeah a 25 meg ohm resistor which is a big old beast so if we try and draw this out although the ignore some of these arrows this was the software i was using and we split the uh, circuit up into easy to understand bits so we'll cover there and we'll go for the easy bit first of all so we've got our two uh, AA batteries giving us three volts and this runs out here over to the push button switch should have been a push button symbol but couldn't find one and this is running through one of these um, 560 uh, ohm resistors here and through the green LED this is just the dropping resistor for that LED right so that's an easy bit so when you press the button there the green LED lights okay cover that up and I'm going to cover that middle section up which is a bit scary and at this end here bring this over um, we've got high power voltage high voltage coming out of the middle section which will explain and we've got this uh, one kilovolt uh, capacitor and a second capacitor of unknown uh, capacity and this 25 mega ohm resistor uh, and this is leading to an open circuit which is completed when the fly uh, completes the circuit inside the bat um so these get charged up uh, to have decent amount of voltage ready to discharge and this big resistor here is when you let go of the button um, this will discharge these uh, capacitors so that you don't give yourself a nip uh, when the button isn't pressed okay let's have a look at this middle section so this section here uh, to generate the high voltage now classically this is called uh, called a dual thief circuit we've got the other 560 resistor we've got an npn um, a transistor and then we've got these two sets of windings here and i'm just going to simplify this with another diagram okay so this is a simplification of that center 
section of the circuit inside the bug zapper. Uh, and two main routes are going on here. We've got our voltage supply here from the battery and we've got the first route through the resistor, through the first winding uh, of the transformer to the base of the uh, transistor, through the emitter and back. And then the second route, no resistor this time, through the second winding, through the committer, uh, collector and out through the emitter again, uh, if this is open. A couple of key points. This here, the two windings are wound in opposite directions to each other. Um, and that's key for the whole function of this. Uh, and if we remember from Davies lectures, if we've got current applied to the base, then uh, we will also open up this route here, collector to emitter. So when we've got base emitter current running, we'll also get uh, collector emitter current. Right, so what happens? So cycle one, we've got the uh, current through the resistor, through this winding here. Now, it's wound around a ferrite core and these are in opposite directions. So what happens here is we get uh, an induction uh, happening in the second winding. So we start having voltage and current flow. We've got the base here. Uh, is opened with electricity current flowing through here and we've also got current then is allowed to open between the collector and the emitter. This then increases uh, the current produced through the windings here and we very rapidly get a feedback loop of uh, increasing current through the circuit. Um, until it reaches saturation point within the year. And once it reaches saturation, uh, we're no longer getting any more of this induced current. So, uh, uh, at this point, uh, because there's no magnetic field changes, the extra indu induced voltage that was added to the battery voltage vanishes uh, at the base, which then shuts this off. And then we very rapidly get a uh, closing off and the whole circuit then goes in reverse when that happens. Um, and so, uh, and then once again, we're back to the state where we started with the first cycle um, of things charging up again. So what we get with this is a very rapidly oscillating uh, circuit probably about 100 hertz or so, um, backwards and forwards um, uh, within this and run by the, the um, NPN transistor. So if we look back at our original diagram with the centre section here, this here is oscillating backwards and forwards through this here and we've got a second winding close to this which is picking up these rapid oscillations and it's probably a very highly wound um, coil uh, which then will give us the high voltage induced from that uh, for powering up these uh, uh, big capacitors. Okay, for testing this out I've made a bit of a diorama, a diorama. Um, a couple of bits of packing polystyrene chopped up with a, one of these long push out Stanleys and I'm just going to glue them into place and I'll just use some clamps and some cocktail sticks to hold it.
I'm just going to apply some polyfiller type household filler to uh, some of the faces on this diorama to get rid of some of the bubbles and to try and make a lifelike rock face. I'm now just going to apply some paint. Um, I'm going to use a grey just from some acrylic tubes out of a cheap acrylic paint set. Uh, mixing the grey for a rock face type appearance. I'm going to use a brown which will go underneath the static grass areas in case there's any patches. And a darker grey area which is going to be roughly representing a rough road path. Okay, so I'm going to put on some mixture of PVA and a little bit of water first. And I'm just going to practice with this area here. Just a few dabs in the rock face as well, where you might get some collections of grass forming in real life. Okay. Just start with some one millimeter dead. Once you're all glued up, you need to put in a pin, or in this case a small drill, in the area for conduction. And then clip your ground connection from your static grasser onto that. And then take your scrunched up grass to release some of the fibres and start giving it a shake. You can give extra lift to the fibres by passing the charged uh, mesh uh, close to the fibres. Just use some old can of hairspray. Okay. 
a good approach seems to be to build up in layers using different colours of fibres and different lengths of fibres to get a more realistic effect. Using the hairspray in between as a glue and try and make it one of those extra hold type ha hairsprays. There are commercial products for the additional layers but this seems to work just as well. Twelve millimeter dead. It helps to tease apart the fibres before putting them in the hopper as they come quite clumped when they've been compressed in the bag. So I'm just going to squash down some of this here in the front, get a bit more of a roughed up feel. I'm just going to dab some glue down the centre line of the tracks in spots to simulate where grass is still growing where car tracks haven't been. This time I'm going to go for some 1mm scorched. Replace the pin. Take the power off here. To get into the narrow bits, I'm using the little micro applicator that I made out of the vanilla pod tube. And this can be helpful for applying grass to the side of buildings. Spray again.
off with a two millimeter spring. As you may have seen, I've just been tipping the excess off um, this small diorama here. That's less easy to do on a layout, for example. So what people often do is use a low-powered hoover with some uh, stocking material over the uh, nozzle uh, to hoover up excess fibres, which can then be tipped back into the box for use later.
And that's me done for this quick demo. Um, I hope it's given you some ideas, and I hope that you will also give me some ideas in return, as I'm sure you've got plenty.